Can the company's business model live up to the hype? That's the big question going forward. We turn to Sam Lesson and Dan Primack. Welcome to both of you. Sam, kind of a technical question, if you don't mind, but I, a lot of us were curious with these offerings that you know are coming after the company's top tick price. Where do you think the typical employee is? I mean, are they still making money on this offering? Is there any chance that they that they wouldn't be able to exercise their options or anything like that? I mean, sure. It depends on when they join. You know, I think with, with these types of things, obviously, the people who are in very, very early, uh, the founders and then kind of the early employees are going to be up massively. Um, people who joined yesterday, not so much in the last few years where they, the prices were much higher. And so I think, you know, there's no question there's going to be a wide range and where people are by percentage just come down to like what the hiring of the company looked like um, over the over the course of the company's history. I, I don't know that offhand, but usually a lot of the employees come in later, not early. And I find it striking. You're saying this is not so much a bellwether as a step in the journey. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, there's two ways to look at IPOs. One is that, you know, it's the culmination where the price is great. Everyone's won. The founders are happy, you know, get super rich. The, the crew gets tipped. Everyone wants liquidity, et cetera. It's a, it's a real moment. The other is like, look, you know, as I think is the case here is the price is down. The company needs to be public for a bunch of structural reasons. Um, you know, they're going to get public. But, you know, what you're seeing is a lot of the investors even buying up because not only is this not the end of the journey for them, it's, it has to be a step along the way. Uh, a lot of the founder, a lot of the employees will be underwater. You know, a lot of them will care about their next grants. Uh, this is it's hardly a, a, a we won moment. Dan, what would you add to that? And I, you can kind of look at these com the company's financials two ways. One is that they only grew 4% in the first half, which trails DoorDash, which trails Uber Eats. But the other, as we spoke to one DoorDash analyst recently, he said, at least the, the, the perspective showed me that this business can be fundamentally profitable, which was a question mark. Yeah, so two things, just going quickly to the employees and, and are sure. they making money or will they make money? The the shares, we've talked a lot about this $38, $39 billion. That's true for a lot of folks, but they also did an internal revaluation last, I think either last year or earlier this year, which actually almost tracks exactly to what the valuation is as of this very moment mm -hmm. uh, at around 40 bucks a share. So so some of those folks will be okay, and those are RSUs as opposed to options. You know, on, on the bigger picture about this company, they have proven that they can be profitable both on delivery, which is kind of their core business, which has always been the question. Same kind of thing that Uber's recently been able to prove. But then also they have this much higher margin advertising business, which is nearly a third of its revenue at this point. And they've been doing it for several years, but they've really expanded it recently. And as part of this, there's a concurrent private placement with PepsiCo, which there's also a strategic piece to, I believe. So clearly that's where they see kind of the, the real acceleration of their business. And just to build on that point, Dan, advertising is, you know, a huge number here, which is like a third of the business. So uh, that that has, you know, that's a business I think that investors can can kind of get behind. How important is it that the core delivery business also remains in, in the green? Well, I mean, you, you need the core delivery business because otherwise, I mean, the, the reason the advertising business matters is because people open up the apps to do to make their orders and then they see certain products that get prioritized over others or, or there's specials on, et cetera. If somebody's not opening the app in the first place, the advertising is largely irrelevant. Sam, yeah. uh, go ahead. Yeah. I would just add, I mean, like, this is how grocery works in general, right? Like, you know, if you have a physical grocery store, there are end caps. They make the very high margins on the advertising around the store when people come in. But you still need the core grocery store to work.